Thomas Jefferson was uh, very resistant to the idea of giving a monopoly to authors. He said, that's contrary to everything we're doing in this country, and it's still contrary to our general economic system in this country. But we've given a monopoly over works that are created by people. Uh, then, you know, they, they, they okayed the Constitution, and almost immediately they had to amend it. And the very first amendment was what? First amendment. Yeah, the First Amendment was the First Amendment. It was very good. I feel like I got, got smashed on that one. What was the First Amendment about? Right. And you can see what happens. If somebody has a monopoly over what they wrote, and somebody else has the freedom of speech, those two things can collide. And in fact, they did collide in 1841 in a uh, couple volumes of what was called an autobiography of George Washington. There was a whole bunch of letters. And the guy who owned the copyright to the letters said, wait a minute, I'm, I'm, that, those are my letters. And he sued. And the judge uh, had to look at it for the very first time, and he's kind of scratched his head. And he came up with four questions that he wanted answered before he would say whether it was fair or not for the copyright owner to win or, or for the defendant to win, the publisher. And what he said was, well, I want to know, I want to know why you're using it. I want to know what the underlying material was. I want to know how much you use. And I want to know if this second use replaced the market for the first use. Are they just, are you just elbowing out that first use and trying to sell your books instead of his books? That wouldn't be fair. And sure enough, uh, after he considered all those things, he said, this isn't fair use. Fair use, and that word has stuck in the English language in, or in America ever since then, and has been expanded on. And what's interesting is if you take all the cases having to do with fair use in nonfiction works, books at first and later film, they fall into a very comfortable pattern. In 1978, the Congress, in its wisdom, incorporated those four questions into the copyright statute and said, fair use is determined on a case-by-case -case basis, which is right, it's like good matters, you know, but you have to consider these four questions. Now, the problem with those four questions is that if you're a normal thinking person, they don't give you quite as much guidance as you would like. Professor Samuelson up at UC Berkeley did this wonderful treatise uh, some years ago that said, you know, fair use is really confusing, but if you would break it down and just look at the fair use cases for software codes, for instance, they form a pattern. Or if you just do it for music, they form a pattern. And, she mentioned in a couple pages of this uh, groundbreaking article, if you just did it for documentaries, it would form a pattern. She didn't tell us what the pattern was. 